Jim Farley says that Ford's engineers are not very good. He says that Ford's engineers waste a lot of time and just aren't very efficient. But Ford's engineers have actually come up with a genius way to increase range in Ford's electric cars. I absolutely love it. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Thank you for tuning in. I'm coming to you from Thailand. And here in Thailand, it's, it's always hot, which is great if you love to swim in the pool like my boys do. They've been having a great time in the pool. Now, it seems at the moment as though... It's pretty hot at Ford. Things are actually heating up in a big way. In, in fact, a lot of good ways. Ford has announced partnerships with several battery companies. It's announced it's using lithium ion phosphate batteries in the new Mustang Mach-E vehicles. This is a really good development. Probably the most interesting Ford development over the past 12 months is this new technology they've come up with because it's, it's actually genius. It's so simple and it makes so much sense. And Ford says it's going to increase the range of its electric cars by 5%. So what actually is it? Well, the Blue Oval has done a study revealing a potential range boost of 5% with this basically proprietary Ford technology. Temperatures are one of the worst enemies of electric vehicles because of the range losses that occur when temperatures go down. I'm sure you've heard all about it. Electric cars are terrible when it's cold, rah, 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 rah. Now, aside from the fact that sodium and lithium ion batteries, hybrid batteries will solve some of those challenges. The reality is that yes, when it's cold, you do use your battery to heat the car. It's the same thing for a gas car though. Of course, you're gonna use petrol or diesel. So nothing much changes there, but this will actually be a really cool technology. Ford says, there is a better way to heat the interior of your car than using your air conditioning system, which does use a lot of power. This could lead to an increase in range of around 5% in temperatures around minus seven, or even you know in the minuses, essentially minus seven degrees Celsius, that is, which is about 19.4 degrees Fahrenheit. In a long running study in Europe, Ford has fitted a small fleet of electric transit vans with heated elements in the armrests, floor mats, door panels, sun visors, and a panel below the steering wheel to see if it would be much more efficient than using air conditioning. Turns out it is. It's a lot more efficient. The results are exciting. I think that it's kind of a development a better development of the idea of having a heated seat belt. I did a video on the heated seat belt and how I think that's a brilliant idea for electric cars. In fact, for any car or any kind of device where you need a seat belt, a heated seat belt makes total sense. But this takes that idea one step further. Now, if you want to see my video on the heated seat belts, I'll put a link in the description below. According to Ford, testing took place in winter and summer on dry and wet roads and in heavy rain and wind using the vans for parcel delivery, special goods del deliveries, and a craftsman's one day job, 350 kilometers or 217 miles away. When everything was done, when they'd done all the testing, obviously over the course of several months using a fleet of vehicles, the math said that using the heating, the math said that using the heating elements used 13% less energy than the air conditioning users this leads to an average range gain of 5% in cold temperatures. It's brilliant. It's so simple and it makes so much sense. Now, one of the things that happened in the study was the drivers often open and close the doors. So this is probably part of what made it so much more efficient to use paddles instead of actually heating the whole car. We all know that if the doors or windows are open when it's colder outside the temperature, inside a vehicle drops, said Ford. This is especially true for delivery vans as drivers make frequent drop-offs and the heat generated via aircon is lost more quickly while heated surfaces stay warm, said Marcus Espig, Systems Engineer, Propulsion Systems Engineering, Ford Research and Innovation Center in Europe. Reducing energy use not only improves range, it also cuts costs, 
and helps ensure that the way we travel is more sustainable. Now, Ford says it's looking into developing other technologies that could offer energy saving improvements in EVs, such as a heat exchanger that takes heat waste from the electric drive unit and uses it to heat the cabin and or the battery pack, as well as a powertrain conditioning function that keeps the components of the electric drive unit at the most energy optimal temperature. One very cool thing I love about this is I personally am a pretty hot person. A lot of the people that I travel with often are not. They're cold people. Uh, a lot of females run at much colder temperatures than males. And even when you have you know, split system air conditioning, you have dual systems where one will heat up one side of the car differently to the other, I still can feel a bit hot and uncomfortable when the person next to me has their temperature on high. But if you had heated panels on their side, it wouldn't really affect the passenger. That's what I love about this idea. Not only that, I also love the fact that you could save, even if you didn't save 5%, let's say you only saved 2 3%, it's still worth it. I mean, imagine being able to increase range by that percentage. How much would you pay to do that, right? Basically, this could be something that you don't even pay anything for. This kind of technology is very, very cheap to implement. It's such a simple solution such a cost-effective, simple solution. That's what makes it genius. There's all kinds of solutions and ideas coming out like this, being implemented in cars, little changes to electric cars to make them more efficient. And all of those things are adding up and will continue to add up to give us these 600 mile, 1000 kilometer range cars, which I believe will be commonplace by 2030. In fact, I think it'll be the norm that people just say, well, Range is not an issue at all. Now, when you combine this and think about the fact we'll have longer range cars, plus now we're starting to see chargers installed everywhere. We're seeing them at subways. We're seeing them at gas stations. We're seeing them at colleges, at universities. We're seeing them at restaurants, at pubs. We're seeing them being installed everywhere. People are going to think back and say, remember when we had to go and fill our cars up with gasoline? What a damn hassle that was. EVs, my friends, are the future. And it's these kinds of technological innovations that are kind of pushing the industry to get more range that are actually making small improvements to cars that when combined together mean we're going to get amazing technology. The future of the electric car is absolutely incredible. Stay tuned to the channel. I'm going to keep bringing you more news like this for new technological advancements that I believe really will make a big difference. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.